Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to some more Jenny the Clue Detective Vu. Uh, we just found the college term paper, so now we're just gonna go explore. Oh, nope, can I? How do I? Oh. What well, that's a way to start off the episode. What a mess. I should investigate. Oh, so how do I, how do I how do I how do I get up there? Do I kinda Oh okay, it already puts me on the Hello, what are you? Jenny had an instinct for sorting treasure from trash. To the untrained eye, this was just a discarded piece of an old postcard. But to Jenny, it was a mystery waiting to be solved. I should keep my eyes open for any other pieces. The case of the puzzling postcard. Is that all over here? The notice board was awash with flyers, personal ads, and the occasional piece of gum. Lovely. I'm amazed anyone can find anything on here. Fortunately, Jenny had a useful trick to use in a situation like this. Mom always says, a great detective eliminates the noise. Focus on the details, and you'll find clarity in the chaos. I wonder if anyone else reads this junk. Hold on. What's this? Oh no. They've extended curfew hours again. 9 p.m. to sunrise? That's ridiculous. But necessary. Power outages had become a regular occurrence in town. It was dangerous to be wandering around after dark. It won't be long before we need a permit to go out at all. Hello, oh, what are you? I found a sticker. Oh, hold on. Oh, sorry, my eyes is super itchy. Mm. Can't look closer at that. What the hell? That was the first time. Like that might just be part of the bike. Hey, you. Oh, hi there. What are you doing back there? Well, I was pruning, but then I discovered this cerulean bugberry bush. Cerulean? These bushes are all over Arthurton. Actually, this is an incredibly rare bloom. There's nothing rare about Arthurton. I beg to differ. Arthurton has many beautiful and exotic plants. Yeah. Mm. Really? Like what? Mushrooms with eyes that glow in the dark, berries that emit a bioluminescent mist, and flowers with nectar as sticky as super glue. That's pretty Where? cool. I've never seen any of those things. Well, believe me, they do exist. I've had the pleasure of seeing them up close. That's one of the privileges of working for Dean Strasberry in his greenhouse. Oh. Uh. Anyway, Wait, so I is it something that Dean Strasberry has cultivated, or is it something that's natural to Arthurton? Because those are two separate things, dude. Those are two separate things. And yes, I'm being pedantic. I do not care. Bonfire celebration. I'm just waiting for the little M to pop up. <laughs> we love you, Dean Strasberry. Oh, it's another nose board. Oh, I can't read that? Okay. Bonfire! Saturday! Oh. Signs and decorations adorned the entire campus. A party to celebrate the Dean's impending retirement. Left. Left. 
close. I said left, damn it. What part of left are you having trouble with? This is why we use stage left. <laughs> left or your left? My left. So Obviously stage left. I mean my left. Why would I mean your left? So you want me to move it the other way? Yes. Nothing would make me happier. If you're not careful, we're gonna have Brown's brains all over the floor. They seem busy. Yeah. I should probably lead them to it. Yeah. Oh, clean. Hello, Mr. Strasbury. How are you today? Les Les. A the jolly gentleman. The dean was often seen shaking hands and kissing babies. Beloved Adina Gombo, every surga uncle laughed like Santa Claus. More than that, he was her loyal friend. What do you think, Jenny? The dean had dedicated his life to Gombo, and the townspeople had spared no expense no, 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 no. to him. Quite a the striking way. resemblance, Mr. Strasbury. It's a scary thing, Jenny. Retirement. Great excuse for a party, though. <laughs> what will you do when you're no longer the dean? I've been trying not to think about it. This place won't be the same without you. Things change, Jenny. Time marches on, and we must do our best to adapt. It's going to be difficult, but I'm sure we will get through it. What do you mean, we? Do you think they made my belly too big? Oh, no. It's probably just the perspective, Mr. Strasbury. <laughs> you are a clever one, Jenny LeClue. Speaking of which, have you been practicing your detective skills? Have I? Of course, always. <laughs> well, then, I have a challenge for you. I bet you can't guess what I ate for breakfast. At last, a real challenge for Jenny. A fiendishly difficult puzzle that would take all her wits to solve. <sighs> well, okay. Anything for you, Mr. Strasbury. Oh, how wonderful. But first, I need to ask you a few questions. The interrogation to Jean Strasbury. <laughs> I'm liking this dude. Why do you have a gallery piece behind your ear? Are you a magician? I feel like you would do magic. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just glancing around. The dean was a big fan of the Gumbolt Moonbeams, and not just because his son was a prominent figure on the team. Well, a bench warmer, anyway. Dandruff in your mustache. He has no hair. I have a hunch it's powdered sugar. What's that? That that looks that looks important. For the dean, being covered in plant life was not unusual. His work as a botanist was renowned. Looks like you're carrying some extra baggage today, Mr. Strasbury. Well, I do have a lot on my mind. I was referring to your legs. Oh, thank you. I have been doing my daily calisthenics. No, I, I mean the sticky stuff on your pants. What? Oh! That is a very it's strange nice. thing to get from a truck. I've been working on a new orchid hybrid in my greenhouse. Oh, that's nice. They're beautiful. But the leaves are quite clingy. I will say, I am looking forward to spending more time in the dirt. Pardon? That's an odd way of framing gardening. His watch is slow. That's unlike the Dean. He's usually very punctual. Well, he can be punctual while his clock is still slow. Is it? Oh my. That explains why there was no cheesecake left in the cafeteria. Oh. <laughs> my head's not screwed on today. I'm liking this, dude. 
or I'd be late for my meeting with your mother. Oh, really? She didn't mention anything to me. Oh, well, of course she wouldn't. It's nothing important. Why are you meeting then? It's just, um... Probably stuff to do. My, my plans for... Uh, retirement? Your party? Yes, that's it. My retirement party. Thank yeah. you. Are you okay, Mr. Strasbury? Of course. Now let me just fix my watch before I forget. <laughs> Now, where were we? Oh. Uh, that's a cool ring. Ipsa scientia potestas est. It looks like Latin. Your ring sure looks old. It was made for my grandfather. Oh. He passed it down to my father, who passed it down to me. And when the time comes, I'll pass it on to my son. The Strousbury family had been champions of education for generations. What does the inscription mean? Knowledge itself is power. The inquisitive spirit is a mighty thing, Jenny. And nothing is as important as the truth. Like he accidentally put a spoon in his pocket instead of his pen. It's got a coffee stain on it. A thick bundle of note cards poked out of the dean's pocket. What's he keeping so close to his chest? You've been making a lot of notes, Mr. Strasbury. Oh, I was intending to make a speech on Saturday. Why have you scratched out so much of it? Your mother suggested I keep it short. And quite right, too. I must have rewritten it 20 times by now. I just can't seem to find the right words. Yeah, I was gonna say, that looked very important. shirt properly. It looks like a blood stain, but the seeds indicate otherwise. So, what do you think, Jenny? Can you guess what I had for breakfast? Sure, Mr. Strasbury. I've got everything I need to solve this mystery. What did the Dean eat for breakfast? Jam on his shirt and powdered sugar on his tie. The evidence points strongly to the Dean's breakfast consisting of one, maybe two donuts. Yay! What else can I tell about the Dean's morning? Right, back to the drawing board. There we go. The dean had neglected to wind his pocket watch. The act of a distracted man. This resulted in his whole routine being thrown off. Which might explain why he has a spoon in his pocket instead of a pen. You had a donut for breakfast. Yes? I'm guessing... Hmm... Let's go with stra strawberry. <laughs> How did you know? That part was easy. You always have donuts for breakfast. But something else caught my attention. Oh? I think you have something on your mind, Mr. Strasbury. You are usually a picture of precision and punctuality. But today, there's a spoon in your pocket and your shirt button is undone. My, my. 
You really are a Leclu. Your father would be so proud. Thanks. Well, I should be going. I'm meeting your son by the lake. <laughs> and I'm meeting your mother in the library. What a small world this is. Too small. A perfectly small world with everything in its right place. Who would want to change that? Pardon? Nothing. See you on Saturday. Oh, yes. Until we meet again, Jenny LeClue. Well, that's not creepy at all. In her short time as a detective, Jenny had learned never to ignore a ringing phone. How often is this happening? Hello? The dog barks loudest before the dawn. What? CJ, is that you? The dog barks loudest before the dawn. Uh, really? I don't think that's this CJ, again? I think that's Christopher it's Lloyd. It's me, Jenny. We don't need to do this. He's gonna do it again, isn't he? I have no he? idea who you are, and I know no one by that name. The dog barks loudest. I would just hang dog. up on him. Fine. Uh. Horse. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a cook a five-course meal. Good. The wind blows strongly from the east. A watched pot feels very self-conscious. Excellent. The evening sky is full of fireflies. The absent-minded goldfish swims into the blender. Ah! Jenny, it is you! Sweet Jesus! Of course it is! I need to meet with you right away. Okay. Where do you want to meet? This place will do! Everyone in town knew that CJ was mad, even dangerous. He's not dangerous. He just doesn't accept things at face value. He's sure, annoying he's is what he is. He's on extraterrestrials, but at least he's passionate about something. CJ and Jenny certainly indulged each other's obsessions. But most of all, CJ treated Jenny like a colleague. And not a little kid. CJ, why did we go through all that if you're right here? Can't be too careful. Are you sure you weren't follow? Who would be following me? Shh. This place is compromised. We don't have long to talk. Now, what did you want to talk to me about? What? You called me. Did I? Why? Talking to CJ was a bit like navigating a maze. You had a rough idea of where you were headed, but you couldn't be sure you'd ever get there. I'll help you figure it out. your birthday, CJ. Birthday? Whose birthday? Kaiser's birthday. But Kaiser died on his birthday. Assassination? Possibly. Abduction? Almost certainly. CJ, the card? Oh, this. It's for you. Impossible shot. Died instantly. No suspects. No human suspects, anyway. Thanks, CJ. That's, uh, thoughtful. I didn't think you'd remember. I know what it's like to lose something important to you. Now triple shred and incinerate that card as soon as possible! It's got my fingerprints all over it! Maybe you should've just worn gloves.
What's that sticking out of your sock? Ah! That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I intercepted a secret message. Classified intel. It's proof, Jenny. It's happening again. It's time for us to join the fight. This doesn't look like the kind of pamphlet he usually makes. It's being professionally printed. Could CJ finally be on to something? Oh, it's just part of a cereal box. A cereal box from another space-time continuum? No. Nope, just a regular cereal box. Yeah. It's an ad for a toy. But why? Why would it just be lying there in the trash? I'm sorry, CJ. There are still great mysteries out there to solve, but this isn't one of them. Jenny had uncovered why CJ had contacted her, but something else had caught her eye. with strange symbols where the cardinal direction should be. Looks broken. Where did you get that compass? Ah, you spotted it. I knew you would. It belonged to my father. He left it to me to find the truth. You're not going to find anything with that. The needle is wandering all over the place. A bit like you. It's searching. For what? For them. It's this town, Jenny. It's Arthur. They're here, among us. And this proves it. Or it could just be broken. Could be. I guess we'll never know. So what's the plan now? Library. Research. Very important. Very hush-hush. They let you back in? Not yet. But I've got this hut now. It wasn't your head that needed covering. No, for disguise. I know, CJ. What is it this time? More UFOs? Radio wave mind control? A globally connected communication network used exclusively to view pictures of cats? Jenny, you sound crazy. I'm just preparing my defense for the hearing. Is this because you tried to hypnotize Mrs. Brown's prize poodle? No. That was last week. It's because I peed in the water tower. What the CJ? fuck, CJ? Gross. And this is the thanks I get for saving everyone from the mind control chemicals? Well, I guess I'll see you later then. But CJ was gone. He's high behind the phone booth, isn't I know he? You're standing behind the phone booth. I just watched you walk over there. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's Batman. No, I'm not. Okay then. Bye. See you later. Okie dokie. Oh! Damn! That's the third time today! Oops. Hi, Jenny! Great job solving that case today. It's really cute, the way that you and your mom work together. Oh, I nice. wish I was that close with my parents. Enough chit-chat. Got anything new for me? Oh, yes. This is the real deal, hot off the press. I haven't had a chance to distribute these yet, so keep them to yourself. Ada and Jenny belonged to one of the oldest societies in Arthurton. An eclectic band of treasure hunters, collectors, creators, and dealers. Together, they were known as... Sticker Club! For generations, Gumbolt students had been hiding and finding stickers all over town. Officially, Jenny was too young to join. But she'd found so many stickers on her own that they'd made her an honorary member. Ha <laughs> ha, loophole! Let's see. Nice crisp edges, rich colors, very tacky. Thanks. I spent all week making these. If only you spend as much time in your schoolwork, you might not be failing my mom's class. Uh, Jenny thought to herself. It's to celebrate the Dean's retirement. I'm super sad that he's leaving, but... It's a perfect reason to make new stickers. Exactly. Oh, we're going on an epic sticker hunt before the Dean's party. You should join us. Even if Jenny had wanted to join them. And I don't. 
She knew she'd be stuck with her cousin all weekend. Thanks, but I work alone. Oh, okay. See you around, Jenny. Just say you have plans, Jenny. Like, I'm socially awkward and I would be a little more tactful. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm just talking. Is that? Oh, wait, and there's nothing to look at here? <laughs> oh, hello. What are you? Lake Nowhere, one mile. Yeah, let's leave. Ooh, sorry, I hit my microphone. Stop. <laughs> no, 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 you, no, 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 you're just a little off. Okay, let her go. There's got to be a better way to do that. Oh dear. That was ominous. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Detective for hire. Jenny had saved up the whole summer to place an ad in the local paper, but no one had answered it. Until now. What could this new case be? Her imagination ran wild, picturing the possibilities. And so, after helping her mom at Gumbolt College, she hurried to the pier at Lake Nowhere to rendezvous with her new client and crack another thrilling case. Okay, well... I'm gonna wait... Okay, cool. I'm gonna cut it off here for the second part of Jenny LeClude, Detective <laughs> Um, yeah, so in the next part, we will see what... what this new case is gonna be so i'll see you all then bye everybody <laughs>